Back, uh, we are counting down to the last couple of minutes of trade uh, and uh, again it's been a week where mid-cap uh, action has come back to the forefront. In fact, even as we're sort of about to close out, there's still stocks on the move. Something like uh, Inox Wind. We discussed that story, of course, with the, the possibility of a stake sale in Suzlon. Even this other stock is quite excited. Many of the names, IRB Infra, for instance, again on the upside, ending pretty much at the highs uh, of the day as well. First Source has seen buying. There's about a 3-3.5% three, up move in First Source as well. Dipin, uh, you earlier said that this is the time to really keep the faith and get into the market. So uh, tell us, you know, on the mid-cap screen where there's been so much of price damage, what are the top value plays that come to your mind now? So I think I said that better to perhaps, you know, wait a while and look for buying when there are severe corrections on account of political uncertainty or global factors. But nonetheless, I think uh, investors who have significant cash flows could still look at nibbling into the market at these times. And the first of the block has to be the private sector banks, uh, be it corporate or retail. And uh, a lot of these banks have come to attractive valuations, the likes of, say, Anderson Bank and Yes Bank have been discussed extensively on the channel and there is general consensus that its valuations are cheap compared to the fact that all the uncertainties are out of the way. And then there are, uh, you know, so some very nice uh, 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 NBFC companies uh, which are linked to large business houses, the likes of, say, LNT Finance or Peramal or Bajaj Finance. So, if an investor has got an underweight position in the banks and BFC, this is a good time to perhaps uh, increase uh, their holdings over there. And thereafter, I think consumption-oriented uh, stocks uh, would appeal to us. Uh, the likes of uh, FMCG companies uh, could be Jyoti Laboratories or could be even uh, Britannia at this point of time. Uh, both companies came out with decent set of numbers uh, according to us. And then there's this whole building material and uh, uh, construction material space uh, and maybe even appliances. Uh, because at some point of time, I think uh, real estate will start picking up. We're already hearing of higher volumes over there. And that will improve the demand for uh, such companies. Could be tiles, it could be ceramics, it could be uh, electrical equipment companies like an Havels or appliance company like a Bajaj Electrical. So that's where we are perhaps focusing uh, our next kind of a buy list. Uh, whenever we feel that the valuations have reached rock bottom or, uh, per or perhaps a, a correction has taken place, which have taken these stocks into the deep undervalued zone. Okay, well, uh, let's do one thing. Let's just count down to close. About one and a half minutes left to go. Ashwini, what's the strategy for next week? Um, you know, this week has been really volatile, but by the end of the week, the Nifty has gone up almost about half a percent. Uh, you expect uh, some follow-on buying on the upside next week, and what would the strategy be? So you've done half the range from 10,600 to uh, 10,800. Now uh, the Dow is up, uh, you know, 100 odd points. In case uh, Monday uh, you have global markets rising, chances are uh, we open with a gap and then we probably test levels closer to 10, uh, 900, 950. So that way only half the up move is done. The big positive is mid caps are participating. So that creates a nice momentum of its own. And uh, I don't think anything much is going to change. It will be 10,600 to 11,000 and back. Uh, sometimes, you know, there will be more participation than others. But overall, it will be those 10-day, 12-day swings. And uh, early uh, Monday, if you can get in and you are not in right now, uh, then chances are uh, you have about 100, 150 points uh, upside. Particularly Bank Nifty, which is down almost 200 points. People who bought uh, today, uh, likely they'll make money, uh, uh, you know, next sure. week. Probably 27,400 could be a level there. Okay, the bell has gone. Day and the week is over, gentlemen. And the Nifty is choosing to go home just below 10,800. It's been a decent week. It's been a bit of a pullback. And today, while the close is absolutely flat for the week, we're still up about half a percent thereabouts. Let's quickly run through the movers and shakers of the day. Today was a great session for oil marketing companies. Despite crude oil being at 67, perhaps the hope of inventory gains continues to lift these stocks. About 3% up on BPCL, IOC 5% higher. Um, and HPCL has also been up about 4%. Metals as a pack has been uh, very, very resilient all through the week and that continued today. JSW Steel is going home with gains of over 3%. There are gains on the likes of Vedanta as well. Then come some of the auto names. Tata Motors, for instance, trying to bounce back. Maruti is trying very hard to now move above uh, or closer to that level of 7,000 once again. 
with a gain of about 1.5% today. Some buying on Bharti, Airtel was evident. HCL Tech found some takers today as well. And Yes Bank managed a 3% up move as well. Uh, in fact, speaking of some of the other movers and shakers, IT as a pack along with metals was the other key pillar for the market today. With Protech, Mahindra, most of these stocks were on the upside. Uh, however, some of the big boys like Infosys were a little more subdued. Infosys has ended up only marginally 0.2% for itself. Uh, TCS up about half a percent. Now let's talk about the drags. The problem with the market was Reliance Industries. Throughout the session week, ending also with a drop of about 1%. The other was HDFC Bank. Similar story there, a 1% loss on HDFC Bank. In fact, banks in general, I mean, Kotak Mahindra, after the block deal, never quite recovered today. 4% down at the day's low on this stock as well. Indusind Bank was also cooling its heels. Uh, LNT and ITC were some of the other names, some of the biggies that managed to ensure that we didn't really get a bigger move on the upside. So, all in all, a flat close on the index, Sonia, but I guess for a week, not bad considering how fragile we were looking in the first half. It's not bad, and you know, for the mid caps, it's better yet. So, mm -hmm. the mid cap index goes home with almost half a percent gains today. It's up about one and a half percent for the week. And if you look at the big gainers, I agree there are a lot of these beaten down names, penny stocks have gained this week. So, you know, uh, whether it's a Suzlon, uh, whether it's a GVK Power, Lion Sintra, Adani Enterprises, all of them gained this week. Um, you also had J names like JP Associates. Metals gained this week, so JSPL was up about 15 odd percent. Uh, ADAG stocks bounced back a tad bit, Reliance Power, Reliance Capital, etc. in the green. Uh, NBFCs bounced back, so DHFL up almost about 13 odd percent. And you had a couple of these names like Madison Sumi that gained today. So today that stock was up almost about 6 or percent or so. So at the end of the day and the week, it's been a very um, flat performance for the headline index. But beneath the surface, there was a lot of volatility this week. So we had a couple of really bad days, a couple of really good days. And today just evened out, consolidating at this 10,800 level. Uh, before we end the discussion, Amitesh, uh, any um, ideas on you know how to approach the market next week? I mean, what would you do? So, uh, is this in the long side i think couple of sectors which you know could possibly be the highlight would be one uh, auto pack and auto ancillary pack i think we had good action madison bajaj auto and hero motors start also look pretty good so i think there's some uh, there could be some uh, traction happening there on the upside there are about individual names like beml then couple of psu banking uh, names which opened with a gap up with the capital in news yesterday and had a subdued session but they haven't filled the gap so they could see some follow through on the uh, upside Okay. All right, gentlemen, we're going to wrap up. Uh